Hey, what's up, guys? This is Gary coming back to you here from the Ramsey Custom Shop. And some of you may uh, realize that uh, YouTube creators, you know, depending on how big your channel is, you get lots of offers to show off different kinds of products. And I've kind of gotten to where lately I've just I just turn them all down because the the stuff that they're sending is you know kind of junky stuff, and they get way more benefit out of you showing their product in the video than you do for a ten dollar pack of step bits or or whatever it is that they're sending. But recently I got contacted on this one, and I thought you know I've I've seen these things a lot. I see other people using them on YouTube uh, or just in general, and I've never tried them, and I, I don't have any, and I've never had any, and these are carbide tipped. Uh, hole saws so I need to you know I need to drill a lot of holes in steel that are pretty large you know you know for what I do anyway two inches inch and a half that in that range so I thought it might be fun to just get these and if you're interested in these there's a link in the description of the video that'll take you to the uh, eBay site where you can purchase these I think it's no maybe Amazon I can't remember uh, but just check the link it'll be down there um, and this 25 bucks basically and you get one two three four five six seven eight nine you get ten and they're in different sizes and they're all metric so I think most of the time you know in larger holes you're not really you know if you're using a hole saw you're probably not going for precision and so if it's metric you're just trying to rough out a hole at least for me that's what I'm doing I'm trying to rough out a pretty large hole for something whatever it is and if it's metric or standard it doesn't really matter but obviously if you're trying to get a hole right on dimension these may not work for you because they're they're all in metric so um but i thought we'd drill a few holes with with a couple of them and just check them out and compare them maybe to a regular hole saw you can see this one's kind of been used this is a milwaukee one which these work really well um and maybe try to compare it to an annular cutter i've got a two inch one in the mill over there now that we're gonna use it for. So the one thing right so the one thing right off the bat you'll notice about this particular style or this particular size is the depth of cut. And I don't know what it's rated at, but we're just gonna check it here with uh, with a uh, caliper and just kind of get a rough idea of what that is. So it looks like um, about a half inch depth of cut, uh, 560 thousandths. All right, you see we got our two inch annular cutter. And again, this is just in a piece of scrap here and we're just trying to get a hole through it. And um, I'm gonna put a little bit of cutting fluid on this and not, uh, I mean, one of the bad parts, I've got this Noga uh, mini cool here, but once those chips start slinging around those big nasty wiry ones, it just knocks that thing out of the way. And the next thing you know, it'll be spraying me in the face. So I'm just putting a little bit of cutting fluid on this and it's only quarter inch material. So we're just gonna plunge through it in one cut. We're not gonna uh, do any pecking or anything. And I think that'll be a good comparison with the other two to see how, how those go. And we'll put cutting fluid on those as well. So uh, I've, I'm gonna run this at about 150 RPMs, two inch annular, annular cutter, quarter inch depth of cut. And you know, as far as the feed rate, hey, this is manual and I'm gonna be pulling on this handle pretty dang hard. So I don't know what the feed rate's gonna be. Just be as hard as I can pull it basically once I get it going. So here we go. Not sure why that is these larger annular cutters at certain feed rates they really uh, want to chatter on you and um, so let's let's take our piece out and have a look at it so here's the back side where it plunged through and there's just a tiny little bit of raised area but honestly it made a really really clean cut you know the the surface edge in there is really clean you know so and then we'll uh, at the end we'll come back and measure each of these holes and compare it to the cutter itself 
to try to get you know some kind of uh, comparison on on how close it came to to putting the hole in there correctly. All right, you probably can't see that, but I'm just I wanted to check the uh, run out on this uh, tool holder here, and uh, so let me put this in neutral. So I had it zeroed out there, right there, and we're just going to go all the way around, pick it up past this uh, set screw, see what kind of you know how much max run out we have in it. So it looks like in the range of about a thou run out at the end of the 40 taper tool holder. Um, so let's come down on the, uh, on the actual flutes here and just check a couple of them and see how they do on run out. So I'm just gonna pick this one here and I'm gonna zero on it. And then I'm gonna rotate this around just a little ways just to check again. So one thou. So it, it will go another little bit and check it here. One thou on that. You may not be able to see the indicator in detail. So the run out in this cutter is, is kind of matching the spindle run out at about a thou, one thou. So I'm gonna check this on the other ones as well. Now the difference is the other ones, this is in a 40 taper tool holder, uh, chucked you know, directly on the tool. The next ones I'm gonna, I've got a, um, So uh, we're checking the run out on this one. Let me zero it out here. And um, looks like about 10 thousandths total swing there. It, it went up to about um, 92 thousandths that way and back across the zero a couple thousandths the other way. So 10 thousandths uh, run out down there. And I'm guaranteeing you some of that's gonna be in this drill chuck. I don't know how much of it is, but um, when we get through drilling this hole, I'm gonna put a pin in there in the drill chuck and we'll check the pin. That one has already stopped cutting and I, I don't know uh, the first plunge I went in there it, it felt like the chips were bonded you know may have been bound up and you know I'm not, I'm not sure um, let's see let me let me take it out and let's look at the carbide tips it looks like they've they've been worn off of it here so uh, all right I think I see what's happened here the the little uh, Relief openings have uh, gotten, they got clogged up really quickly. The carbide, yeah, some of those, I don't know if that's showing up good or not. Let me see. 
some of the carbide tips are, you know, kind of deformed and uh, that one there looks like it's been worn, you know, it looks shorter. That one's got a different shape to it too. And it only looked like it was cutting on a couple of them. It, you know, you saw the stringy chips come up from like two of the, of the carbide teeth. So, and that one is, uh, okay, it was just packed in there tight. So that's probably why it stopped cutting. So let's let's see if we didn't dull it and maybe try to cut again and do a lot more pecking with it. But it looks like we're gonna have the same problem with this as a regular hole saw is that, you know, there's really no way for to get the chips out. Uh, people have pointed out that you can drill a small hole or some small holes around the perimeter of a hole saw, but man, what a pain, you know? That's, I mean, if, if that's all you have and you're in a pinch, then yeah, you, you definitely do that. But if you're doing this on a regular basis, you'd be better off to use an annular cutter uh, or a twist drill of the size that you're looking to, to put a hole in. So let's go back and uh, see if we can finish drilling this hole. All right, this time I've got the mini cool set up and uh, so we can get maybe uh, try to get those uh, chips to be blown out of there. So we'll see how well this works this time. I'll put a little bit of fluid in it. Yeah, you can't really use cutting fluid with the mini cool. Just blows it out of the way. All right, I think we've uh, I think we've done all the damage we can do on that one. I think it's uh, we just dulled it out there at the beginning. So let me get a different one and see if we can go a little more gentle with it and more packing with the mini cool running and see if we can get it to put a hole in there. That one kind of did the same thing. It, it went in and started cutting a little bit and it looked like it was cutting on one of the tips and then it just, it ain't cutting anymore. You know, it just kind of stopped cutting. So, I don't know. You know, you guys let me know what you think. I'm, I'm gonna, the thing about this, this kind of stuff is, is that some, a tool like this would really normally be, not be used in a machine shop. You know, a machine shop is not gonna use this to make a hole with. Um, your average, you know, kind of DIY guys, they're, they're probably going to use something like this to make holes with. Um, and if you can't just th chuck this up in a drill chuck or, or whatever and use it and get results out of it, then, you know, maybe I did something wrong. Maybe I'm not, you know, my technique isn't good. Maybe, I, I don't know. But let me get the regular hole saw and we'll try that and wrap it up. All right, well, I'm gonna say that, uh, so these, these guys never really made it through any hole. In fact, the first one almost made it all the way through. The second one only went in a little bit and it just, it just got to where it wouldn't cut. And, and I noticed on the second one, uh, we were clearing the, clearing the chips. Now you saw the hole saw, you could hear it when it would start to try to recut the chips, you know, and, and just ra you know, raise up, let, let the, mini cool blow the chips out and it made its way through there you know didn't really seem to have much of an issue now you'll notice uh like on the on the back side of it there there's a raised up burr hopefully you can see that in the camera and of course the the ultimate is the annular cutter i mean that thing just 
There's no burr, really, really clean hole. Um, you can mount it in a, two, you know, in a 40 taper tool holder. So you get really low run out. You know, you saw about a thousandth run out compared to trying to put something like this in a drill chuck. Um, you know, and this is always gonna make a bigger hole than it's intended to make. I don't remember, this is all worn off. I might be able to see it somewhere on it. Oh wait, there we go. Okay, so this is a one and a half, this is supposed to make a one and a half inch hole and that's supposed to make a two inch hole. We're kind of getting off track from our comparison. This was about these guys, but I'm gonna say uh, the people that, I, that sent me these, really nice people, um, but I can't say that I recommend them. I'm gonna put the link down there just in case anybody wants to go check it out, but let me, let's check this. Now this was a drilled with a two inch, um, let me get the bore cleaned out. A two inch cutter, hole, um, angular cutter, so let's see what size hole it made. God, look at that. I don't know if that's showing up on the camera. I mean, it's dead on two inches. So this hole saw is inch and a half, supposed to make an inch and a half hole. Let me clean this out. Now I didn't deburr either one of these. This is just like as it cuts. And I know this is probably gonna be bigger than an inch and a half, but let's look at it and see. Yeah, not, not terrible, you know, it's, it's, 40 thousandths over, you know, so if you, again, you're trying to do, putting a hole saw in something, you're not looking for precision, you're just trying to get a rough hole in there that's in the general, di you know, diameter of, of your target. Um, and, you know, 40 thousandths bigger on that, probably not, not the worst thing in the world. I mean, that's probably livable for most people and what you'd be using it for. So, all right, guys, um, that'll wrap up this video. Maybe it was help helpful to somebody out there. And if somebody has any thoughts on, you know, a better way to use these, um, you know, I was turning that thing at 160 RPMs really slow, uh, which should be plenty slow enough. I mean, these other guys didn't seem to have any problem running at that RPM. Um, and in fact, the, the annual cutter, you know, being two inch, but let me know if you think I did something wrong on that. Um, and hopefully this will help, you know, you and inform a decision. Maybe you want to buy those for wood. I don't know. All right, guys, I'm going to wrap it up. See ya.